Okay, welcome back everybody. Uh, I do hope you had uh, some time to grab a cup of coffee and to enjoy these very nice uh, videos. I think videos from uh, young farmers with real life experiences out there in many countries in, in, in Europe. After this event, we will display the videos on the Smart Agriups YouTube channel. So please, when you want to look them once more or when you want to look at them, uh, go to the YouTube channel. We will now move over to our next session. And that's a session, new tools to communicate and disseminate for farmers, along with career advice for the agritech sector. This session will be chaired by Lorena van Kool, president of the Young Professionals Network. And that's a group of uh, supporting young people at the start of their career here in Brussels. Lorena van der Kool, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Edwin, and welcome everyone to this session. So uh, throughout this event, we saw the challenges faced uh, by young people in, in rural areas, especially the young farmers. Uh, through the second session, we looked at the digital solutions and how we can improve the life in rural areas, but also the business of these uh, young people. In the third session, now we are going to look at the communication um, tools and how farmers can make use of the new uh, communication uh, methods to increase their visibility, um, but also uh, their activities on these uh, social media channels. Um, I will start with uh, my head of the Young Professional um, co-founder. Uh, we initiated this uh, platform, interactive platform for people in Brussels right before the COVID hit. And then we opened it to young people in Europe. Um, the idea or the objective behind this platform is to encourage young people uh, to exchange, uh, to use peer reviews, but also to improve the network. Uh, we realized even more in these special times that having a strong network um, could really help to disseminate your ideas, but also to improve your uh, business. Um, just a few more words about the Young Professional Network. We have 85 members and we have more than 420 followers on our LinkedIn group. If you want to see what it's all about, we are uh, currently preparing some webinars and workshops. Please visit our uh, LinkedIn group. My colleague will um, place the, the link in the chat and you are more than welcome to uh, look around and also join this um, really buzzing uh, network. Um, in this session, we have uh, very uh, special speakers, and I say specials because they're all young and they're all active in communication. I will start with Guillaume Joyo. Um, he has an agricultural uh, background. He worked with several agricultural organizations, and he is currently working actually for six years at the National Federation of Agriculture Holders Union in France, where he is focused on the RD and the impact of new technology in, um, in the farming sector. So, um, Guillaume, you have the, the word. Hello, everybody. Thank you for, for your invitation. Um, I, I will walk on, I, I will talk about two points uh, which is important for us and I will make a, a focus on the impact and the, the, the challenge of the formation uh, of the young farmer and farmer in general because uh, it's uh, as in technology it's progressed very fast uh, we will really we really need to improve and to keep the skills of the farmer update so we, we already said before this morning, uh, new technology uh, will help farmer to take different decisions and robots will help farmer in all tasks in daily activities. So it's a way to avoid limit and repetitive regular standby tasks uh, and especially tasks with uh, low added value. So they will help to take better decision and it's definitely a way uh, to save time and use it on better value action. So in the way, um, 
new technology will help to make the private sector more attractive for young people. And it, it could also help to get the better revenue for rural people because uh, we they can use and they can develop activity with a better added value. Um, in, in other side, um, new technology will help farmers to conciliate a better family life and a professional life. Because uh, we, we also know it's a limit uh, to get farming activity attractive. And it's also a point where uh, it, it could uh, be a problem for young farmers because we, we are changing of structures of uh, family farm, in, in, for example, in France, because uh, now, for example, my parents uh, used to be work both on the farm, but it's not uh, the case for for the, the new people who, who start in farming activities. So uh, the, it's it's more difficult uh, to understand for someone who is not working in farming that you 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 need to work all the day of the year, even uh, on the weekend. So another point which is really important uh, about new technology and with should be help a uh, farmer uh, as decision tools also it's a way to bring more information and objectivities to the farming production process uh, so it's easier to explain their jobs and action to the neighbor and to the consumer uh, we, we also uh, people are waiting also for this because consumer is no he, he, he wants to uh, know how he produces his food and the neighbors uh, need to be uh, informed. Uh, uh, there is no danger or any consequence of the farming activities for his life, for example. So all the different tools uh, will objective uh, the decision of farmer and it's a way to, to, to answer to different kids' questions or worries, uh, worries on the farming activities. So that's maybe it's a very technical point uh, on what new technology and especially digital technology will bring to farming activity. And we also uh, said um, maybe a lot about this. But to use this technology, um, we really have a big challenge to renew all different skills. Uh, for, for example, a decade, uh, it's only 10 10 crop harvest. But if you focus on the evolution of digital technology, it's nearly an, et an eternity uh, challenge. So that's why we, we really need to, 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 to bring co uh, continuous formation uh, for farmers and we need to reinforce this activity. If young farmers um, should get all their skills when they start, uh, we know in the next in the next few years and maybe 10 years after they start the farming activities, we need, they need to be updated uh, quite fast because the evolution of the technology is very fast. It's also the case for the farmer who are already in place because uh, if we talk about farmer with maybe 40 years old now, uh, there is, uh, you have to work 20 years more uh, and we, we need to, to also update uh, and renew his skills uh, to, to use uh, the better uh, and to use the best of the technology can be bring for the farmer activity. So, um, oh, just this is continuous training and updating of skills. It's probably not in the habit of the farmer in Europe. Uh, most of them are working in organizations where formation is uh, in the program of, the, of our company. And every year uh, you have got a program of formation, but it's not the case in agriculture and especially for farmers. So that's a change of habit we need to initiate. Uh, it's a long work. But it's really important to, to keep uh, all the farming people, all people who are working in farming sectors, um, update and use the best of we could bring with uh, all the technology. They, they already have got some formation, but most of the, in most of the case, uh, they are made by the if, if, for example, you buy new tools, the contractor or the seller will bring you some formation. But it's probably not enough because it's uh, 
it's a specific and um, a specific formation, but and probably not enough uh, open to to the farmer. We need to give a large vision of the new technology to the farmer. Um, all the technology were available, how to use it, uh, how to combine it, because probably like unique solution for a problem, it will be maybe not again possible in the next few years because we have less and less molecule for chemistry, for example. Uh, and in the past year, uh, when my father uh, starts to, to work, um, when they got a problem on a crop, he, he have got a molecule for this. Uh, if I start uh, in farming activities, it would probably not the case because molecules are there is less and less molecule, and I will need to use digital tools and robots and maybe uh, also some uh, biological products. But only solution is not possible. So I I need to know how I can combine it and which is the limit of the new tools and the solution also. Um, so that's why we continuous formation uh, is very important uh, for every farmer in Europe. At IFNSA, uh, we, we start to work on a, on a project with uh, specifically the agricultural data. So we observe uh, that farmers are really not enough acculturate uh, to, the, to the data. They don't really know the new risks and the new risk include by this technology, and they don't really know how to manage uh, them with different partners. So we try to build a, a label with name Data Agri. It's inspired by the code of conduct from Copajo Cogeca, and we certify the company who applies the, princi the principle of the code of conduct in the practice uh, about data management uh, with, with the farmer. In this way, we help farmers to take a better choice on their farm and which partner he will use on his farm. And he's make with this label, when he use a company with a um, label, we've got a label, he know he has got um, a minimal rules and he can manage the data, he can keep it after because it's not the case with uh, every machinery. Uh, for example, and it's a, it's a minimal uh, right you've got. It, it's just an, an example uh, of the challenge because really farmers don't know anything about data. Uh, there is only a few people who are know how to manage it in farmer. And so that's why uh, we, we, try, we, we try to do this part. Uh, it's just a small example. Uh, there is a really big challenge, but it's, it's showing how it's important for everybody to build uh, trust uh, and improve our skill rural, uh, to improve skill of rural people um, in, uh, in, in every way we could. Thanks, uh, thanks Guillaume, thanks a lot for this uh, fresh perspective. Um, and I uh, agree that uh, highlighting the educational and the training aspect for young farmers and for young people, it is really crucial and uh, we should pay attention to that and include it in uh, our uh, activities and in our projects. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, we will uh, come back at the end with uh, questions for you from the chat, hopefully. Um, we will go now to Alice Hodge, or also known the Cult Girl, and she will uh, be talking about her experience on Instagram, but also social media, and how you can actively promote uh, your activity as a young farmer. So the word is to you, Alice. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks so much. Let me see if I can get this uh, screen share to work. There we go. Okay. Oh gosh. This is peak example of rural internet not being the best. <laughs> we can see it, no problem. Oh, fabulous. Um, so I'll do a brief introduction of myself to begin with. So hi, I'm Alice. I'm 26 year old. 
I'm originally from Cheshire in the UK, but I now live in Kildare in Ireland. Um, and despite having no family ties to agriculture, I've been farming for about 10 years now. Um, I grew up with a dairy farmer as a next door neighbour and was invited to give a milking a go one Sunday afternoon and just fell in love with it from that point on. Um, I decided to study for a diploma in agriculture and then I went on to the University of Reading and I got a degree in agriculture. Um, and I, during my degree, I also spent 12 months working in New Zealand on a dairy farm out there. Um, and when I was in New Zealand, I met my now partner, uh, Sean, who was Irish. And so that's how I ended up living in Ireland. <laughs> and I farmed since I was 16 years old and all throughout my studies. Um, but it was when I moved to Ireland and I got a full time farming job, I decided to create my Instagram account, The Class Girl. Um, it was born out of two things predominantly, uh, annoyance and love. Annoyance at the level of fake news that I'd seen on social media around farming and especially around dairy farming from animal rights extremists and ill-informed members of the public. And a love because I've always loved taking pictures of my farming life. And so Instagram felt like the perfect place for me to set up camp. Um, I first put up a post back in February 2019 and since then I have accumulated over 14,000 followers, over 130,000 likes, I've appeared on national newspapers and TV and I've even come out with my own line of merchandise um, but most importantly for me it's connected me to farmers and consumers all across the world. I've received messages to my page um, saying that my page has given them the push to pursue a career in agriculture and especially from young women this means a lot to me. And I've also received messages saying that since, <clears throat> since following my page they now feel comfortable going back to eating meat and to drinking and consuming dairy products because they feel that they are better informed about how they are actually produced. On a personal level, I have gained contacts via Instagram that I would never have had a chance to create the old fashioned way. I've got contacts in Ireland, the UK, mainland Europe, America, the Southern Hemisphere. And I've also picked up tips and tricks almost daily from new ways to improve farm organisation into basic um, animal management tips. Like any aspect of the internet, you can't have the good without the bad and farming so publicly will always attract attention <clears throat> from people who think you're doing it wrong. Um, people who will not agree with the concept of farming as a rule and people who just simply won't like you. Um, however, the good definitely outweighs the bad and for every one negative message or comment that I receive, there's easily 10 positive ones that outweigh the negative. During lockdown, there has definitely been a boom in Insta farming accounts and an equal boom in the public's interest in farming. Now more than ever, people are genuinely interested in what it takes to provide food, the environmental impacts of it, the welfare of the animals involved, and simply want to know the faces behind the food they see on the supermarket shelves. I would encourage anybody involved in agriculture to enter the digital space of Insta farming or Twitter or Facebook, wherever you feel the most comfortable, whether to actively participate or to simply be an observer. There is a digital space for almost every industry in the world, and I think it would be foolish for farmers to be left behind. It's an amazing tool to be instantly connected to the consumer. They can see the real story of what it takes to produce food and feel better connected to what they see when they go shopping or when they go for a walk in the countryside. It's time we updated the, general's public, the general public's view of what a typical farmer is and what they do, while simultaneously updating farming's view on how having an online presence can create business opportunities that can lead to additional sources of income, which is much needed in today's farming world. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Alice, for sharing your story and uh, good luck and uh, with everything, your activities. We wish you more followers on Instagram if that's <laughs> possible and more uh, retweets and so on. Um, 
I think it's it's really impressive and it's also a source of inspiration for young people, uh, young farmers, but also women. And we will tackle a bit this uh, gender aspect towards the end. Thank you so much. And um, I encourage the audience to, to come up with questions for you and for Guillaume at the end. Um, thanks a lot. And we'll move now uh, to Amber. She's a young uh, Dutch farmer and she's also a colleague of mine at Scutelar and Partners. She uh, shares her time between the family dairy farm and consultancy. She works for the sustainable agricultural team. And I will give now the floor to Amber to hear about her experience and how our young farmer combining uh, farming with uh, actually consultancy sentences or work in uh, in communication yes thank you Lorena I will uh, keep it maybe a bit shorter than Guillaume and Alice but uh, uh, yeah for me I'm a, a dairy farmer I'm 25 years old in the Netherlands in uh, North Holland above Amsterdam and during the weekends from Fridays till Sundays I just milk the cows and do everything on the farm and from Monday till Thursday I'm at the office uh, doing a bit of consultancy for the Dutch Agricultural Ministry, etc. And I think uh, what is most beautiful about this combination is that I can consult with the practical knowledge in the back of my head. <laughs> so I think that it really uh, improves each other. And besides this, I am uh, very active as a board member of the Agricultural uh, Youth uh, Association, the NIEK or the HAIEK in the Netherlands. So I'm also uh, a bit uh, involved in the the policy things of uh, how that affects young uh, young farmers and maybe how uh, we can improve that so young farmers are still interested in staying or being a farmer and in contribution to Alice and Guillaume I think it's very uh, important that young people are uh, staying enthusiastic or motivated to be a farmer or to become a farmer and I think technology is an important part in this because it makes you more flexible as a young person. For example, I am um, I'm able to work for four days in the consultancy while still being a farmer. And that's due to uh, some technologies that we have on our farm that it's able that I'm able to do this, uh, do this combination. Um, and I also think uh, social media is very important to reach out to our young people instead of the old people that know uh, know a bit of the conventional part of farming. So Alice, I think you're doing very well. <laughs> I'm still at the level of uh, influencing only my friends to uh, show them a bit of realistic realistic uh, perspective of dairy farming, but maybe I should uh, broaden my, my uh, groups. <laughs> and yeah, I think it's very important to show, um, besides uh, being a farmer, that it's very nice, that it's also um, with, with whatever degree you have or background, you can be a farmer as long as you're really motivated and interested in the rural, uh, rural life. So that's for me a, a motivator to keep my followers updated uh, in this combination of consultancy and farming. So that's a bit about me. Um, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Amber, for, for this uh, interesting vision and how you divide your work and your life. It's uh, really encouraging for many people, I think. Um, thanks a lot. And um, also, let's see if there are questions uh, in the chat. But before uh, doing that, so uh, you have actually one or two minutes to think about your questions to Guillaume, Alice and Amber. Um, I take the opportunity to remind everyone that this week is actually the gender week of the European Parliament. And as Guillaume has mentioned in his intervention, we need to find a good uh, balance between our uh, private and uh, work life. And I think it's important to, to recognize the role of women in agriculture and of young uh, women. Um, and uh, how best to do that than uh, a message from uh, the Smart AgriHub's gender ambassador, uh, Antutu Ambiko. She is um, a, a farmer, a global agripreneur, and uh, she is actually implementing the farm to fork ideology in, uh, in South Africa. So um, let's listen to, to her message.
Allow me to write on the protocol that has been reserved for all the honorable members of the European Parliament, distinguished guests and fellow speakers. It is a huge honor and a great privilege to be part of the speakers during this momentous period. I also want to thank the European states for understanding the need to have a dedicated gender equality week. It is indeed a great step towards our effort, which is to achieve the desired inclusion in the sector. As part of the UN study, women in agriculture account for more than 60% in labor force in Africa. However, in Europe, it's a total different picture. It consists of 30% of women participation and a family partnership arrangement and less visibility on high tech representation. If we could have better access to technology like safety and security for both on farm and off farm activities, the gains are worthy of the investment. We will not only improve production by up to 6%, but will also reduce the number of hungry people by up to 17%. So by working together, we have an opportunity to exchange the knowledge from both worlds by endorsing the local innovations from Africa and also take advantage of the high tech from EU. So I'm appealing to decision makers really to prioritize right at policy level to have a targeted approach in as far as women inclusion, utilizing the technology is concerned. And my message to young women particularly those from the rural areas, is that be aggressive in your approach, be ruthless with your time, spend time with people with some vision and be creative and innovative. I'm of the belief that COVID has also bring a granted as an opportunity to utilize our time wisely, think innovatively beyond COVID time, be resilient and keep working hard. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, and thanks, uh, Antutu, for this powerful message. Um, I'll, see, I'll see if we have any questions in the chat, not yet. People are warming up still. But then I have a question to, to you all. Uh, what do you think is different now in, in farming? How is uh, technology or communication and social media influencing the activity and how can young people um, use this to enable uh, a more visibility and uh, more success in their uh, businesses? Alice, you are muted, if I'm not wrong. You can go first. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I think it's, it's definitely been a bonus um, to the agricultural industry because if you are not from a farming background and you don't understand, you know, you look at a farm as you drive past it and you might not necessarily understand what's going on behind it rather than taking to Google and getting information from you know, possibly unreliable sources. If you can find a farmer on social media, I don't know a single person that wouldn't spend the time to answer any question asked to them by a consumer. Um, so I think it helps to bridge the gap between farmer and consumer better than we've ever been able to do it before. Thanks, um, Guillaume, Amber. Um, you can go. I got nothing really to add. I was also thinking about the connection between food and the consumer and it's a really a very, very easy way to make the gap a bit smaller. You only have to look on your timeline and see something about the food you might be eating a few hours later. And also you don't have to visit an actual farm and go there and meet, talk to people. You can just see it on your screen at home. I think that's a very easy way to show a bit more of the farming life. Indeed, thanks, Amber. Yeah? Uh, yes, um, I, I think there is a big difference uh, about farming activity, but how farmer make the decision, um, the, the ecosystem become more and more complex and new tools will help to take the better decision and in the, far, in the far, for example, on a farm, you have more and more data. Uh, it's a link to the, the producing activity, and farmer can 
analyze him by himself no because there are too much data so uh, you have to know how uh, decision tools is working and you have to you need to be able to to understand what is the preconization preconization of, uh, and which is the limit to make his own decision uh, so i think there was before uh, there was it was easier to take a decision uh, when they produce than now and uh, you need you know more uh, competence to, to 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 take the best decision than before Thanks, Guillaume. Um, we have actually a, a question for Alice now, a very uh, specific one. So, which is the advantage of Instagram to other social apps for farming? Um, I think it's kind of personal preference, um, but I love using Instagram the most because um, I feel like it's the use of both grid posts and story posts allow you to um, gain like a real connection with people and like your um, story posts are quite informal and it's normally me talking to the camera um, and so it feels like it helps to build the connection with the consumer and they feel like they know you um, better than just you know reading words off from a tweet so I think it just adds that extra dimension of connection. Thanks, uh, Alice. Um, I see that there are no further questions. Maybe then a last uh, message from all of you. Um, what would be uh, your message towards young people that are considering taking, uh, or an advice to young people considering uh, taking up on, on this career, either in agri-food or uh, being a farmer? Very shortly. I will start with Amber. Yes. My last me message would be for everyone who ever considers working in the agri-food sector that it's not, uh, it is a lifestyle, but it's not that your whole life will be taken over by the farming. It's still possible to do something else that you really like and to combine that, or at least, that, at least that's my experience. And I think as a young farmer, you have a really important role in all the big challenges that our world uh, is, is in the world around us. So take up the challenge, but don't be like, fully uh, overtaken by the uh, the agricultural lifestyle. Thanks, Amber. Very good advice. We go to Guillaume now. Yes, um, maybe the last method which is important is to say there are so many things to do in farming activity, uh, so many beautiful shows, uh, so many beautiful uh, things, and things are changing very fast. So everybody i think everybody can find a, a way to produce where is in uh, you can be happy with uh, this way so it's uh, so many opportunity and you, you, we just we just need to try it okay thanks Guillaume. um and last but not least alice your take a home message yeah, I think that Amber and Gillian have um, summed it up pretty well. There is definitely more to farming than just physical farming. And um, there are so many roles within the agri-food sector. And like Amber said, if you want to be a farmer, it doesn't have to be your whole world. You're still allowed to have hobbies and interests off the farm. And uh, yeah, you should never be made to, made to feel guilty if you're wanting to take time off farming. Thank you all for this uh, really fresh perspective and insight on, on being a young farmer because we have discussed throughout the event, but it's really good to see actually what young uh, farmers think and uh, do. So thank you thanks a lot. And I will give now the word to Edwin. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Lorena from the call for sharing this uh, third session. And thanks also to the speakers. Uh, well, before we close the, the session, maybe some, some uh, wrap up from my side, some, some conclusions, not really, but more, uh, I think we had a very in inspiring uh, uh, discussion with uh, nice presentations. And actually the challenge for the rural area is to make it uh, more vibrant and economically and culturally uh, uh, livable. And this is a key factor to bring these young people back to the rural areas. 
And uh, Mr. Ruysen also said, well, we, we have to go from targets to tools. And uh, digitalization is a key factor uh, in that. It will encourage the youth to stay in rural areas and boost their development. But as Mr. Tudor has already mentioned, it also means that there should be uh, uh, a good infrastructure. And there we need the, the, the policy makers. Huh? They have to help to build up a strong infrastructure in the, in the rural areas. Uh, from the commission side, uh, we have seen that there are various, various projects and fundings available for digitalization of agriculture and business. Uh, and the digital innovation hubs can play a very central role uh, in, in specific areas. And they can provide uh, direct support to the farmer and help them to access the state of the art of technology. The second aspect that was discussed in the event was actually the challenge to support young farmers to access the sector uh, based on the accessibility of land and accessibility of, of uh, fun financial support. And I myself was a bit shocked to hear that uh, only 5% of the farmers today is under the 35 years old. Uh, and that is, is, uh, is a big issue. So also uh, Mrs. Lenzi highlighted the issue in renewing the generation uh, because this generation is, all, we also need this generation to uh, organize the green transition of agriculture. So it's very important to change the narrative around farming and enable young people and young farmers to embrace uh, the technologies. Uh, well, Jeremy De Circle pointed out that it also the cap is already going into the right direction, but it would be important to have a more comprehensive roadmap to support young farmers. Uh, well, Doris Magard from the Commission also showed uh, with the objective seven of the cap, uh, how uh, the commission is supporting the young farmers and why innovation uh, will benefit from young people, but also help young people to take over the farming activities. In this concluding third session, we have uh, heard ourselves how young farmers are in this game. And I think they, uh, they all three showed us that there are still a lot of possibilities in working the, at the farm and combining these activities with also uh, other private preferences, but also we would like to work in a consultancy like uh, like Amber. So I think this is not the the, the closing uh, yet of this discussion. I think it's the start, and we really have to to do a lot to uh, to increase the five percent uh, of farmers. Uh, uh, under 35. <coughs> I would like to mention once more that the, this event is recorded and it will very soon be available on Smart AgriHub's YouTube channel. In this YouTube channel, you will also find the videos we show during the, the break and uh, the links are also shared in the chat. I would like once more to thank all the, the chairs of the three sessions. Uh, Mr. Ruysen, uh, Mr. Beers, and uh, Mrs. Van der Kolk, and also all the speakers that are uh, uh, live or by video with us. Uh, and last but not least, I would like to thank the whole Smart AgriHubs team uh, for the very well organized uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Have a good day and see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>